Welcome, my darlings, to the second episode of Blood Bonding. And as you may have noticed, we have on our couch here Brittany Trambauer Smith, who plays Melisende, and Leona Rohr, who plays Thomasina. As a reminder, this is a postseason interview show, so if you have not watched season one and you don't want to get spoiled on anything, go ahead and go back and watch those on our YouTube channel and then come back to this in video on demand. So hi, welcome ladies. How are you? So good right now. Thank I'm you. Very you well. look fantastic. I know that some of the audience has commented, and I know I've certainly noticed that you always look better dressed than the guys. <laughs> I mean and you haven't stopped with this show. You look amazing. Oh, you. <laughs> we're both significantly older than the guys, too. That's, Are you? So, yes. yes. We're both I, much older than the guys. Yeah. No, we're talking about the, the characters, right? We are, okay. yes. Okay. So it would make sense. I, and we're, no we're both more buttoned up than them. Yes. Kind of as like a character. Because we know Aaron's a baby. Mm -hmm. Baby, baby. Yes. Um, but did you both get, uh, just, we're going to just launch right into it. So did you both get embraced in Atlanta? Like how no. old are your characters? Ooh. So do you want to start? Sure. Okay. I will, I'm just going to say where and, yeah. and when can be another question if they decide to. Okay. So I was embraced in Paris, actually. Ooh. So Melisande. You've made a few references to Paris. Yes. Yeah, so uh, 17, oh, I have it in front of me, 1734 okay. was when I was born, and I was okay. embraced in 1769, I think. So like. Going for that Rococo vibe. Yeah. Well, yeah, well revolutionary. As a the anti-Rococo vibe, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So. And then I'm a bit younger, just a little, um, but I was embraced in Talavera, um, and that was... So where's Talavera? It's Spain. Okay, um, and it's uh, about it's some miles outside of Madrid. Okay, um, and actually, so just after um, the revolution was going on in Paris, and as Napoleon mm -hmm. was starting to gain traction, um, I was uh, or Thomasina was a slumlord in Talavera. Oh. Um, she had been a laundress, um, and uh, when she started to gain some. You know, some wealth and some property in Madrid. Mm -hmm. She moved out to the country in Talavera, okay. um, which, uh, like, she started doing more gambling and a lot of that. Okay. Um, so she accrued a small puddle of power there. And that would have um, been Prince Philip at that time, right, of Spain? So he wasn't prince at the time because this okay. was... Um, so Napoleon came in and there was the, like, shoot, the monarchy, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so she kind of embraced the invading French um, okay. as they were okay. there. Um, because it was just power exchange. Um, gotcha. So, yeah. Not really, not really particular about where the power's coming from as long as you got it. F yeah, for her, it was just, you know, stay on top and constantly have the ability to, to move as you please. Okay, so, yeah. nice. And then, so, uh, I know you are relatively new to Vampire the Masquerade, but I think I remember you mentioned another tabletop that you were familiar with before this, right? Uh, yeah, D&D &D 4E was where okay. I started, so. How do you like 4E? I, I mean, never, I love it. I never got into 4E. I did 3-5 and I did 5E. I am all about, honestly, truthfully, I'm all about the, the statistics of it, the math, the rolling, the, mm -hmm. the chance that there was a lot of role play, but it was really like this heavily structured sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I like the math part of it. And you had your archetypes in, in 4E, right? Yes, yes. Not to get too much off topic of Yes, BDM. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really did enjoy it. Yeah, and then I remember you also a little three five, I think, or was it five e? I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay, um, it was, uh, it was in college at one point. Did I, you get feats at level one or no? <laughs> I remember <laughs> I had a dire tiger. Okay, that's um, cool. If that gives anyone any clue as to what I was playing, I don't, I don't think it does. No, it probably doesn't. <laughs> um, but that's all I really remember, other than the fact that I was with a bunch of like other players who had gone eight hours without even thinking about food or drink. So it was just. I think my longest one was a sixteen-hour run. God, no. and it was real tough with food. Though, there was right? like. We, I think we had pizza, but it was like 12 people in an apartment for 16 hours. Feed, feed my people. Yes, feed my yeah. people. it was a lot. I was joking with someone about doing a 48-hour live stream of D&D, &D, and I'm like, we wouldn't actually do it, but if we did. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a lot of food and a lot of caffeine. Just if you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I do have a few questions on here. So um, what are your favorite characters from previous systems, from this system, with other tabletop role-playing games? 
If you have one. You may not have one if you haven't done a lot. I, I really haven't done a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the Probably the most fascinating campaign I'd ever heard of uh, was a friend of mine named Ricky who was go, was running a, um, a Candyland campaign. Mm-hmm. And honest to God, I just spent like this two-hour lunch with her talking about mm-hmm. just every possibility. Candyland just, like, like the board game. But D and D, okay, I love that. I'm intrigued. Me too. <laughs> um, I ju- I cannot remember the particulars. I was just fascinated by every word coming out of her mouth. Um, it sounds fascinating. It was, and I I couldn't really I I just due to life I didn't end up getting to do that. Um, but I know that uh, any time that I've talked to friends of mine, you know, mm-hmm. you do the the Facebook quizzes and stuff like that about you know what are you most interested in. Yeah, and I've got a lot of people who are just like, you're definitely a cleric, or you're definitely a paladin. I'm just you're like, definitely a paladin. Uh, uh, why? I would see you personally really? as a yeah. paladin, but obviously not Thomasina because that's here's, true. Here's the, clearly here's the real uh, way to figure it out. When something is wrong, do you punch someone in the face to stop it from being wrong, or do you yell at them to stop it from being wrong, or do you just let it happen? I yell at them. Paladin. I'm totally a paladin. 100%. <laughs> Done. Because yeah. it's specifically if something's wrong yeah. and someone's doing it. It's not the... I will, I will say this. Like, it's for me, if someone's doing something wrong, that's not to say that you have to do something right then. That is to say, like, if you if you if you see like something approaching a cliff and you're just like, oh, that needs to stop right now, then do something. But otherwise, if it's just someone doing something stupid, then never interrupt someone when they're making a mistake. I like that. Yeah, it still kind of fits paladin though. Mm-hmm. Doesn't you haven't, you haven't untied? No, you really haven't. All. Not at all. <laughs> well, no. And then your favorite character. So um, I'm gonna date myself, and as Are a person, a as a human, and not as a <laughs> vampire. But um, my very first go at role play was in AIM chat rooms, in AOL chat rooms. <gasps> And it was all text role playing, right? So yep. it's all like you're just writing these yep. stories. You'd use asterisks to do like, you know, when you're doing an action and then you use Back you know, when it was just quotations. The chatting, Literally even, just talking. I did that too, yeah. yeah. And uh, my very first character ever, and I still have a huge soft spot for her, mm. was a female pirate because, okay. you know, back when I'm a teenager, I thought myself like, you know, I'm not like one of the girls. Like yeah. oh, back when that God. wasn't like a toxic you can be masculine one of the girls thing. And be a pirate. Exactly. Like literally exactly that. So I was still learning, you know, still unlearning some cultural things, but like oh, um, yeah. But uh, her name was Cecilia Le Fay, dumbest name that has ever been <laughs> ever on the face of this planet. That. No, it's so... I hate it. It's so <gasps> you dumb. Know what it is? Yeah. It's like a fan fiction self insert name. It's so good. It oh, really is. It is. <laughs> it, you know, but like, so I did. I had some fun times with that character, and then as I like started getting older, I was able to do some more fun like modern characters because doing mm-hmm. fantasy, you know, after a while, you just get to where you're like, okay, this feels like I'm writing a, you know, a dagum. Uh, like a LARP, you know, like it just got to a point where I'm like, I want something a little bit more real. I want to pretend like I'm somebody who I'm not but in real life. So I did a lawyer for the mob. <laughs> yes, okay. So I found like, fun. I found like a, like a current role play group that was doing like, you know, current, um, organized crime. And mm-hmm. so they had like various different factions. That was fun. So I played yeah. a lawyer for mm-hmm. that. And then I would say my favorite D and D character was I had a Deva. Okay. Um, who yeah, that was a popular four E race. Yeah, 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 and I um I had and she was because I have a thing for phoenixes and I have a thing for like the rebirth and all that stuff. It mm-hmm. was she was uh, a fire shaman. Okay, and she would be reborn like you know obviously Deva. Yeah. I don't know anybody who knows this, but Deva like they never die as right. a spirit, but they're reborn in different. Deva bodies right. as they go, and as a fire spirit, she would be you know any gender any any size any shape but yeah. the last one that i played was right. a was a you know tall purple bluish you know female that was had literal fire powers like she would That's minus really 5 damage to anybody who she touched and like oh, it was wow and she was born yeah. by burning down a village accidentally she was just she Whoops. just woke up and she's like oh god everything's on fire well Whoops. how do i get out of here and so <laughs> and alexander the great yeah I, know. <laughs> I love burning stuff what do you want from me uh-huh. like i love the idea the that alexander was just born accidentally burning down a village and conquering like oh no is this i guess i have to do this what <laughs> <happened>? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We still have all of our great writings. We're fine. We're, we're still good. We're still good. Nice, so. And so you mentioned modern stuff. Now, obviously, Melisande is doing more modern things. She works for CNN. So what's her favorite news story that she's covered 
in the span of season one. Cool. Ooh, season one or like or like modern times. Well, because actually, you were covering... that's a good clarification. I'll yeah. say in modern times. Okay, so we're gonna say um, you did have to cover Indiana. So yeah, so she was a jur- she she will have been like a revolutionary, a journalist, a mm-hmm. person who works with social justice and so she made zines in the nineties. Um, <laughs> no, she was she was work she was she was doing journalism, but she wasn't on television because obviously okay. Well, I mean, she could have been on television. That's oh, not, yeah. that's, a, that's a, she could have been different you things, but we're gonna not talk about that right now. Yeah. It um, now that contouring's popular, you yeah. Can look like anyone. oh, she just contoured the crap out of herself. <laughs> But, um, I'm going to tell the chat. I would say. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Sorry, I love that video so much. It is my favorite video. Oh my God, I've watched it 20 times. I yeah. love it. So I would say her favorite thing to have covered as a journalist would have been um, the civil rights movement. Okay. So MLK. Okay. And um, then later it would have been. Um, she did. She was embedded with Black Pan- the Black Panther movement Ooh. for a little while. And so that's, that's some like way background, yeah, background. Yeah. Like. Modern background, but it's I think, stuff that hasn't come up at the table, though. So yes, yeah, that's yeah. actually really interesting. So I, th- I would say that that was probably as a journalist was her favorite thing to, was her favorite thing to kind of try to move the needle on because yeah, you no, know. that's actually a really interesting period of time. And then building on that, what's been your favorite story, new story of season one during the season one time period? Because COVID hadn't started before no. the end of season one. No. Not really. Like no. it, had, it had sort of started overseas, but it hadn't come to the U.S. yet. Yeah. Well, that's going to affect some feed and ground. It is. Yeah, Oof. definitely. So I would say because she's really interested in um, social justice mm-hmm. and, and making things right for the people and the innocent being protected, I don't really know that she would be as invested in like a mortal illness mm-hmm. so much. So... COVID-19 probably wouldn't be a thing that she would, mm-hmm. one, they wouldn't call her in for it, and two, I don't think she'd really care to talk about it, other than saying, you know, we do not have the healthcare system to, to cover this right yeah. now, you know, saying that there are poor people out here who are going to die as a result of this, not really caring about the medical science. But as far as best stories, I would say probably the uh, the the way, the way evolution of the Democratic nominee the okay. season, yeah, um, and that we have gone from having this incredibly diverse, you Just know, huge, huge giant, yeah, huge field to two old white men. Mm-hmm. One being, I personally think, and Melisanda definitely thinks, one being vastly more superior to the other, right, because of you know power of the people and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But uh, I think she would still be pretty disappointed and would have yeah. really enjoyed covering the um, Democratic. Yeah, absolutely. Because you've kind of indicated she's one of the pundits that gets into fights on. CNN. Oh yeah, oh, oh definitely. Gosh. This is the perfect. Yeah, this is the perfect fodder for that. Yeah, yeah. and Anderson, you know, I I will say that I I would say her her relationships are, she probably gets gets along really well with Chris Cuomo. Mm-hmm. I think they probably have a good, good go back and forth. Mm-hmm. She probably gets along okay with Don Lemon. She doesn't get along as well with Anderson Cooper because okay. he's a little bit establishmenty. You know, he's a little bit more Richie Rich. Andy. Andy. Oh God, his last name. The guy who is always with Anderson for New Year's. Oh, oh, she'd love him. Right? She'd be all about him because yeah. you know, more, more, more power, people, equality for everybody, and all That's that. True. Um, and I think that she would probably she she'd definitely get along well with John Berman. He's morning mm-hmm. show, but he does sometimes come at night. Yeah. But yeah, so I think yeah. That's answering your question. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then so talking about jobs, moving on to Thomasina's job. Yeah. So working with kids, does she actually like children? She does. Um, so she's the, uh, this got kind of jumbled in there, but she's the superintendent of Atlanta Public Schools. Yeah. Um, and the way that that started being created um, was originally like, how horrible can she be? And I, I wanted all of that originally. And just like, well... You can either just make her horrible, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Um, so yeah, originally, being horrible is so much fun to play. Mm-hmm. So originally we were like, she definitely eats kids, right? And I'm just like, sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, I love that little office looking thing. Oh, yeah. I was like, sure. You know. <laughs> um, listen, I've been doing that all season. I'm not about to stop now. <laughs> um, so, but part of what that started to be set up as is this very what we call the farm to table approach um, of raising children. Um, oh yes. Um, <laughs> so she is deeply con- she's deeply concerned when it comes to school nutrition. <laughs> She's deeply concerned when it comes to children's health care. Did you never get that? No! Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> it's a different. It, you know what? She is keeping kids out of the school to prison pipeline. Oh my god! I tell you, oh it my is god. the god. She is all about free lunches. Oh my god! You know, if Mel ever finds out, it is oh, yeah. on like Donkey Kong. Like it will. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> Oh, Holy yeah. shit, I had no idea. Oh yeah, no, she's and she's gotten wow. direct results. So she was brought in after the cheating scandal for mm-hmm. Atlanta Public Schools. Oof. You're right. So it's just like, okay, we need to shape this up. So she has like a backstory with mm-hmm. like Governor Purdue. She has a backstory with like all of the the super agricultural big wigs in Georgia. Um, that was all about like, okay, so yeah, how how is a vampire working with farmers? That seems like a daytime thing. Sometimes. Um, I mean, farmers have websites these days. They do. They didn't really in 1992, right? Like Farmers Only, True. right? Isn't that a website? I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 it's a different website. <laughs> <laughs> they grow different. Things. Though, um, she may be going to FarmersOnly.com for a different reason. Yeah. Oh, certainly. <laughs> not, though. That's true. Well, That's true. No, you, they, they are definitely not your type. They're, no. Not at all. No. Not at all. Not looking for that. No. Um, <laughs> That but, is not my preferred meal. No. Um, <laughs> I'm a venture. There's some prey exclusion. Um, <laughs> so that's what we started it as. Hashtag selective feeding. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, and then we also, um, the whole idea of a venture being very corporate. Yeah. Like, that's different at all from a major city Not at all. set of public schools. Nope. Like, that is, a, that is just as big yeah, a deal. Yeah, it's incredibly bureaucratic. There's all sorts of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I could never work in government. Mm. <laughs> well, and see, when we started building characters together, too, like, it was her, you know, very vocal sense mm-hmm. of justice. Um, like, I started thinking just like, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. What can I do? With <laughs> oh, it brews some <laughs> good stuff, man. It did. Um, so it was just, how can I be her best friend? What can I do for you? Uh-huh. How can I help you help me? Help yeah. you yeah. help me. Um, and the more that we kept going into it, it's just like, okay, that's cool on paper, but going forward and into the gaming, um, that was not as cool as other things. Um, and that actually brings up a good point. Yeah. Um, there was one of our fans who wanted to know how... Has your char- have you how have you changed how you played your character, how you thought of your character through the season? And this is for both of you. Well, like we thought we were gonna be at each other's throats yeah. a bit through the season. Yeah. And we played together really well. Yeah, totally. Um, so it was I think both of us character wise, like we didn't have a lot of things that we constantly wanted or needed to roll for. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a lot of situations that were just piecemeal power kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. We wanted to figure si- figure out situations and develop a plan mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah. Um, and so for me, there, or for Thomasina, there ended up being more situations where it was, if I'm going to get through this, it's going to be, you know, either by putting these people ahead of me so they can get shot first, or putting these people ahead of me so they can clear a path for me. Mm -hmm. So there is a very selfish motivation with that, but that just happens to come with, how do I help them? Yeah, that has me thinking of another question in just a second, but I'll let you... I would say, well, just for the the fans out there, I initially wanted to play a Ventrue. Mm-hmm. And as I started writing and as it start, you know, I decided that I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be embedded. I wanted to be at all of these revolutions, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be there at the French Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, the American Revolution, the yeah. civil rights. And Bruja fits that much more. Right. Yeah. But I, and I didn't, being new to the game, you know, I didn't really quite understand that the power dynamic for Ventru would not have made that character be true to character at all would have made no sense whatsoever and after some coaxing mm-hmm. um our storyteller uh you know gave me some more information i didn't have mm-hmm. and i decided to do to go with my uh bruja now as far as how i play her mm-hmm. honestly i'm playing her very similar to how i would have played a ventru she's got stats on yeah. etiquette all out the wazoo as a matter of fact mm-hmm. she's maxed out in etiquette yeah she's very polite she's, yeah she's max, a polite bruja yeah max out in <laughs> etiquette max out in status max out in leadership because the idea is if you're going to lead, if you're yeah. going to lead these these revolutions, if you're going to coax humans to do what's best for each other, mm-hmm. which thereby makes, you know, mm-hmm. decent meals for us, you mm-hmm. know, um, if you're going to coax them into doing what's best for each other, you got to, you can't, you can't always do it with an iron fist. Now, granted, she's a bruja. 
She has an iron fist. Mm. She can use it if she needs to. Right. But, uh... I don't think she has most of the season, though. She hasn't really... Mm-mm. There's been absolutely into... zero, zero, uh, force I've, I've used, but now she I... She did kill a guy. Uh, no, he was already... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he was, like, already sick. He was. He was already sick, and I, I honestly don't know if that's still maybe crossing the line of the masquerade. It's only murder if they find out. Yeah, so, like, um, and really, as far as her etiquette goes, it, it's within a very specific moral compass. So, mm-hmm. like, her moral compass is based on, you know, her, um, her, uh, what do you call them? I can't think of the word right now, but... Um. Her, tenants? Yeah, her tenants, yes. Yeah. Right. So so her moral compass is based on that. If it goes outside of that, she has no problem doing things that mm-hmm. are outside of that. She follows the masquerade loosely because she has to, because it's the right thing to do, mm-hmm. because it gives her the opportunity to do what she wants to do. How I've changed playing her, mm-hmm. um, I would say that I did not intend on her being more uh, uh, magnanimous and gregarious, but mm-hmm. it turned out she became that way because, one, it's hard for me to kind of turn that off. Mm-hmm. And two, the players at the table are all so kind of, like, warm, and they just give off an energy that was really easy to kind of gravitate towards. Even you, dude. Like, seriously. Like, even your character. I think it's hard for all of us because we are good, nice people, and we enjoy each other's company. It's hard to turn that off when we're playing. Yeah, yeah. So I think I turned up the silliness and the sweetness a little more than I normally would. Oh, man. We had right? so, well, because there was this unspoken rule that developed in the game. It was just like, do you have the opportunity to do dumb shit? Let's do that. <laughs> so we ended up like this. dumb shit is fun shit in tabletop. Dumb shit is fun I, shit. I didn't mean to make that rhyme, but like. Yeah. But that's oh, we, we need that on a t-shirt. With our like little <laughs> just Vampire like, the Masquerade blood bag going. Like a, like. On the back, it's just like a picture of Six Flags After Dark. Um, yeah, man. Because we ended up. Like we, when we were at Six Flags, it was just like we need to go get goofy pictures taken. We need to, I like Thomasina was just like, I've never been on a roller coaster before, and so it's just like <laughs> that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at one point, Thomasina and Anton are in the um, are are with Aaron Bless, <laughs> um, who is doing the wrongest things. And so meanwhile, like we're trying to make it look like this guy he's with has a gun oh. on him. And so right, so Anton's got a laser pointer drawing like Mickey Mouse on his chest, <laughs> and like I'm just like draw that S thing that was big in the '90s. Or yes. <laughs> and so like we we kind constantly played with this like if we have a moment to make this just lighter or funnier or and part of that is you know we're not yes we're playing characters that need to be true and we need to be Mm -hmm. we need to be true Mm -hmm. to the game we need to be we need to make sure that we're following a a a really awesome set of ip that's been you know Mm -hmm. provided to us but also we're doing it for viewers yeah. So to some extent, while being very buttoned up and being very mm-hmm. to the letter what our characters probably would have been, would probably provide still a rich story, I don't know that it would be as entertaining for our viewers. No. That's true. So going yeah. a little bit out of character for us on oh, occasion, yeah. because also as old as we are, I feel like we have a huge range of emotion. I think you and I have pretty high humanity, even though... Hmm. I think, I think you and I have similar humanity that's, that's stats. A, that's a response. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. I know I have. I know I have high humanity stats. I don't know about you, but I. Uh, I would say mine. It's it's average. Okay. Yeah. So and then that so that that would roll for insight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's see if our if if we got somebody in the chat who can roll a little nat twenty and then we'll go for it. I don't know. I'm just saying. Mm. Yeah. No. We um. I'm trying to remember. There were there were a bunch of moments. I think we were surprised. Like our last was it the last episode um, where you came to meet me at the um, the King and Queen Towers? It was either the last. It one was. Or... It was. Yeah. The, it was the finale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we were meeting in a um, in the cafe downstairs. That I don't actually know if it exists. Go Probably it does. Or no, it was the one before the finale. It was the I mean, one before the finale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we. Uh, we had a whole moment of just like it was kind of tense. Then after that, it was just like, all right, time to get stuff done. Yeah. Um, because I think both of us, uh, we also both come from like a kind of performance background, mm-hmm. and so there's this sense that like this can be fun, but we need the story to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's not a complacency with just like, you know, all of the memes for you know Vampire the Masquerade is just like let's just get together and pretend to be petty. It's just like you can do that, but it needs to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually, one of the more interesting things that happened during the season is you did kind of start off at each other's throats a little bit, 
But then through the season, you kind of developed a more sisterly dynamic. Yeah, yeah, and, we did. And it sounds like you didn't exactly work that in beforehand. Mm-mm, so was mm-mm. that sort of something you noticed developing starting with Six Flags? Or was that something that you kind of built into, like, for lack of a better word, yeah. fed into yeah. as the season developed? Six Flags was probably where I noticed it the most because, like, the, I was going to, I was testing the waters as far as just, like, we could do some weird shit. I love doing that. And then she was like, do you want to go get dressed up and take pictures? And I was like, do I? <laughs> so she gave me that, that like, you know, she gave me the yes and basically. Mm-hmm. I was just like, yeah, we're going to, we're totally going to do this dumb shit. And it's the best. Yeah. Um, so that was it for me. I would say, so we as characters both thrive on leadership and power. Mine's mm-hmm. a very different, more kind of covert mm-hmm. power, like. I'm kind of sneaking it down the down low, whereas she is getting it. Like, she is like, I want it. I'm having it. It's mine. So any power struggle, any kind of dynamic Mm -hmm. that we were going to have was we were, that was going to need to get worked out. It still was going to have to be worked out. We've got seasons to work this out. Yeah, we do. And if if any of those things that she doesn't know come up, it's going to be. Ideally, as long as no one dies the final death. Oh my God, please. No, I got to knock on some wood. Where's the wood? (laughs) Jesus Uh, Christ. Is this wood? No, it's It's plastic. Oh my God, there's (laughs) some in the wall. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm knocking on the wood, but I've got (laughs) you. All right, Um, never. Never make a bet in a role playing game. Yeah. They oh. won't die. Oh God. Yeah. No. So I would say that um, if we have several seasons to work this out, it's a thing that is probably going to come back up, and it's not going to be as pretty for either of us. Yeah. But I think that um, I, as I understand it, and as I've played it, we yeah. have run into each other in the world at yeah. other times. Yeah. I, I met, didn't know you when you were some lord, or I, no. or it would be a whole different story. No. And like, there's been a lot of instances in Thomasina's backstory where she has gained smaller things of power but she's mm-hmm. very much a know when to hold them know when to fold them um and it's it comes from the gambling mm-hmm. oh absolutely that is like she she knew um one of the reasons like she went from a laundress to a slum war- slumlord was at the time when you did still have aristocrats that mm-hmm. her and her family were kind of working with you knew why there were stains on the sheets you know whose stains those were. You knew how to get them out or how to leave them in. And so it was very much, there was a subtle kind of, you know, undermining power dynamic that was there. Mm-hmm. And so going forward, it was like, how do I take adv- how do I take further advantage mm-hmm. of these incredibly wealthy men? And I think there is like a somewhat misguided, but similar sense of justice yeah. there with both me and Mel. And so it's just, okay, like as I've gone along and as I've found ways ways to mm-hmm. undermine various sections of authority, take that power for my own, mm-hmm. and then just kind of get out when the getting's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think for us, it's likely that we saw each other when she was first brought in as superintendent. Mm-hmm. Um, for a couple of interviews, yeah, especially. New superintendent oh, we certainly would have. For... Oh, yes. Just after yeah. the cheating scandal. Certainly would have would have yeah. talked to you. I, I'm certain that there would have been a panel. You would have been on it. I would have been discussing, you know, mm-hmm. the inequalities in the system and yeah. how it's it's you know, the the school to prison oh, yeah. pipeline. And I would I would probably be arguing <laughs> with you a little bit about that. Oh yeah. Um, but that's not the first time we had seen each other. We will have no. seen each other in the world. Yeah. One of the bright she is resolving the school to prison pipeline. She's doing a great job. Good the, job. The statistics are much better now. <laughs> well, and like we both still have like a vested interest too. When it, like any time we've had like um, a neonate that we're trying to find, it was very much like a, okay, are they a kid? Like how, like the yeah. that first one that we were finding over at the vortex, it was just like they're a kid. They don't know yeah. what they're doing. That kind of thing. So. We were talking about their background. We were talking about their records. We were talking about, like, you know, you can't suck on necks in the parking lot, sweetheart. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, we're both that kind of person that I think has a different specific intention mm-hmm. in caring for another person. Yeah. In her case, it's very much like, this is the right thing to do. Right. In my case, it's very much, this serves my purpose. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And you get an ally out of it in the future. Mm-hmm. Um so we yeah, had a we hope. Of, hopefully. So we had a couple of funnier questions. I love it. Um, both in character and out of character, which one of you would win in an arm wrestling contest? Oh. <sighs> I can't even do a pull up. Um, oh, it would definitely be me. Okay. Man, I have been killing it at the gym lately, so my, my aunt, you can't see him, but there's some biceps in there, y'all. Right. Some yeah. biceps in I've there. I've got some biceps right here. <laughs> Another. Um, but in in character, I'm not sure. I mean, I just took a new power. That's... I've got. H- how much do you have in brawl? 
I don't have much in Brawl, but I have, uh, yeah, no, no, I have, I don't have much in Brawl. <laughs> I got but, it. <laughs> okay, so I guess that would be it, because I wouldn't use, like, a, a, a high power. So, yeah, no, she would totally beat me in an arm wrestling. Tom Cena would try to, like, outsmart each other, or would that be... You I know, <laughs> that, hey, look over there. <laughs> if we were ever, if we were in the, um, if we were in the Athenium, and, like, we were stuck for a night... And we got bored. Which and you might very well be with the way the season ended. Right. <laughs> oh, we're going to be stuck here for a while. Arm wrestling contest. Like, <laughs> there's no reason to do it. But if I can just screw with her after a while, then I might. Yeah, I think yeah. that it would be like a slumber party at first. Like, I would, <laughs> we would probably relish in the opportunity to kind of like, even though it's like a really dangerous time that we're living in, I don't know. But yeah. it'd be like a slumber party at first. But I think that the longer we spent together, like, in oh. close quarters... It would become a little bit of a power dynamic because yeah. I mean sisterly dynamic. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, the yeah. more you think about it, it is very like you come. We both come oh. from romantic countries, yeah. like you know. And I'm very much the little sister in that one too. It's the she, I'm not touching you. Like I <laughs> you do that. I don't even think about that. Yeah. You oh, really absolutely. Do that. Yep. Um, absolutely like and us. then we have a couple of. Did you? Ooh, this one's interesting. Oh. If your character had to pick a different clan to be embraced by. Which clan would you pick? I mean, I initially picked Ventru because yeah. I like I like the I liked the idea of being like a part of this power structure. Hmm. Would Melisande still go for Ventru after the now, developments of no. the season? No, I think that um, I think honestly, like she's vain, but not that vain. I think I'd go with um, uh, Nosferatu. Okay, because I feel like their ability to be as like as like under the radar and like hide and do all these yeah. things is like really right yeah, on with like Shreknet and then yes. yeah. all the technology they have yeah that's very much on brand for Melisanda I think and okay. I think that she would really be into the like finding new ways for people to communicate and you know being... so does that mean Melisanda has a TikTok no uh uh no no <laughs> so no. so we are playing, so I think this, this is probably a conversation maybe we can have later on this in this particular show, but we're playing as uh, Camarilla, or Camarilla, but we're really n- not playing... Tomato, tomato. I know, yeah. We're really not... <laughs> Tomatillo. Pl- Tomatillo. Yeah. Tomatillo, there you go. Uh, we're really not playing it as, like, a Camarilla is. Like, we're, we're, we're kind of, like, skirting on mm-hmm. other things because hmm. we really... Kim Maria normally don't do technology, but no. we are, like, all about technology in our game. Yeah. So I feel like all of us are about it, but maybe not to an extent that we would be that good at it. You know what I mean? Like, gotcha. I'm, I'm good at Instagram because I have an agent and I have mm-hmm. a makeup artist and people tell me what to do. You know, but outside of that, I don't think, and outside of using a phone for basic purposes and, mm-hmm. like, very, very much, like, remedial mm-hmm. usage of of you know, technology now, so but if like she were Nosferatu... no dots in technology is what I'm hearing? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Thomasina does. No, um, talks, no dots. I know <laughs> Philip has one, so Thomasina does too. Yeah. Do you follow each other? Are you mutuals? <laughs> so, oh no, I've got nothing in, nothing in TikTok, but um, I've got... Uh, <laughs> That's all. That's all, Philip. Um, but uh, dots t- and TikTok, cheese. Dots and TikTok. Is that a thing? I'm into that. I'm into that. <laughs> are we, we going to add to our? our... <laughs> oh. I got zero guys. Just a homebrew stat. Dots and TikTok. Not funny enough for all that. Six Flags is opening up, kids. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, she's got um, she's got points in tech um, more because there's no way for her to have that level of power within mm-hmm. the city of Atlanta yes. without um, without an ability to really just consistently communicate. Yeah. Um, and without an ability to reach the right people at the right time. Yeah, and you have to be able to manage an Excel spreadsheet as well, which is... Among other yeah. things, I would assume you would probably have to dabble got... with lots of different... Newsletters, oh, maybe some Oh, posting schedules. Yeah. Uh, she's on Instagram. For yeah. sure, she's on Instagram. All of the visibility with her that ATL is... ATL Public Schools is just run by oh, Thomasina. pretty much. And it's I very don't know much if that's like... a real Instagram account. <laughs> I'm certain it has to be. I'm, right, yeah. But it's, it's all, you know, sports throughout the schools. It's all, you know, school fairs and science fairs and... It's all like mm-hmm. early graduation, early admission, um, AP classes. Like... My next meal. <laughs> Someone's. Look at our know. class of graduates. My next meal is looking very tall today. <laughs> very tall. <laughs> so very tall. Uh, yeah. 
I'm trying well, to think, like, because, yeah, no, with no Nosferatu, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know no. what I mean? Like, because it's very, it's still very edgelord. Right. You know, and I feel like it, she she's just skirting that. Right. So where would, uh, where would Thomasina be if she was, to, if she had to pick another clan? Um, Thomasina is that close to being, a, or uh, that close to being a Toreador. We, uh, oh, clearly. yeah, totally. 100%. Um, yep. That's but that's fair. not unusual for Ventru. Like, Ventrus and Toreadors are constantly just, like, it's power, it's just pursued in different ways. Yeah. Um, if I were to make a different one, um, I've been more intrigued, probably because there's been an absence of them. Well, not an absence of them NPC-wise, but an absence of Malkavians mm-hmm. um, in our play. I, I'm intrigued by that, mm-hmm. um, especially by the seers, um, by anything yeah. that's just like, okay, like, to be able to play that... Um, there are interesting prospects as far as still being part of a, you know, a strict time frame, technically an aspect of performance, technically just, you know, how you're managing that. Um, but I've been intrigued by, um, just the color that they bring to it. Okay. Um, but Thomasina, no. Thomasina's, like... She, if she could, she'd, you know, murder Olivia herself and then walk around in her skin and just be like, this is my life and I love it. Um, I hope more becomes, tapestries, please. I, just that, um, what's that? Oh, who's that comedian? I, I took it off the, took it off the wall that cur- that she turned a curtain into it. I can't oh, remember. Carol Burnett. Lady. Carol yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but Absolutely. with Olivia's skin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just, just I found it upstairs. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Elijah. I hope that becomes some awful fan art. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, so, ooh, here's an interesting one. Actually, I wanted to ask a question before I get back to that. Yeah. So you mentioned sending people ahead of you to clear the way. Yeah. So how does Thomasina feel about getting controlled by the Malkavian y'all met in the Center for Pup- Pup- Center for Puppetry Arts. Mm-hmm. Easy for me. That's I'm the... going to mess up at least three words every <laughs> episode. Yeah. That's the angriest she's ever been. Um, taking control away from oh, as a person, Mm-mm. let alone Mm-mm. as uh, as a Ventru. Um, that's... I played it very willingly because mm-hmm. it was just like... You kind of had to. Yeah, there's yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing else. And so it was just like, I'm totally fine with this. But... Um, that aspect of things... First of all, that entire episode... I that do, episode was a roller coaster ride. I do not like puppets. I do Ugh. not. I never have. Um, that hallway that I described of like some of the puppets that have like you, eyes. You and looked blinking. personally a little uncomfortable through the episode I, thinking about the puppets. So there's a couple things there. So that hallway no longer exists, um, but it was probably one of the most formative memories I had of the Center mm-hmm. for Puppetry Arts. Can't stand it. Um, but the other thing is um, within our mythics. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Anytime Thomasina is around cords or ropes or anything like that, her mythic flaw is knots. She has to untie them. Oh. So you, you took vampire OCD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it was, instead of like counting seeds or anything like that, um, going into a place where she's just like, there are marionettes here and some of them might be tangled up. No, like <laughs> so. Did Thomasina come to the t- come to America when ships still had a lot of ropes on them? Because that yeah, would did. be frustrating. Not like she would have been <laughs> below decks um, or near enough to the ropes to give sails or above decks. <laughs> Not on cruise liners. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, yeah, no. She um, even when she's you know sailing, which no vampire wants to do as a rule, um, right? But. No even then, like, she's usually below decks. She's usually, you know, any place where that's not an effect. Um, but there were a lot of issues that she had with being at the Center for Puppetry Arts. Yeah. Um, yeah, she... Mm, absolutely not. And so especially, like... Absolutely not? <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Points. Um... But like when, so when Mel came back the next day or the, at the next episode and she was just like, you guys should have done more. And I'm just like, should I have, should I have done more in the one place? I really didn't want to be being controlled by another person. And you know, should I? And Mel's, in Mel's opinion, she could give two shits yeah. what, your, what your issue is. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. So. 
Yeah, that was that was a bit of a fraught moment when that was back that, that was that, that episode was, as well. So as a person, yeah. not having been there and watching it because I was at home, I wasn't yeah. feeling very well. Right. I, had, I had to deal with some. Personal I remember you stuff. were in the chat that night. I yeah. was in the chat. Actually... I was like, because I was I was at home and I was watching it and I was just like. <gasps> Ooh, what are they doing? Yeah. Like watching it, like oh, I cannot wait to get back. And oh, yeah. the more what I the read, is doing? and the more I read into my it's failing, be chilly, is he? <laughs> the more I read into, like I, I really spent some time with my sheet between then and the next episode. I went with my storyteller, mm-hmm. and like I, I got some feedback from her on like I have like all these points in leadership. I have been, you know, I, I'm trying to be the one who keeps reason and and, and investigation above all else. How would I how, like? What are, what does the dynamic need to be? And she gave me some yeah. tips, and that's when I came back and I was like, I have like I have to mom explain these guys. Like I've got to do the mom voice. Yeah. Like that's the only way it's gonna be right. And and because honestly, they did break one of my tenants. They killed yeah. who I found out to be an innocent person. Yeah. And and if it had been if I had been you know there, things might may have gone differently. I don't know. I don't know what right. I would have done in that situation. To be honest with you. No. But I can only act on the information I was given both from my primogen and then mm-hmm. what I heard from you guys and seeing the video. And, of course, you know, all of those things combined mm-hmm. into this, like, pure self-righteous rage yeah. that had to come out somehow. And it did. You know? and oh, it man, did. it did. It did, yeah. You Ooh. you unleashed a little bit on the other characters. Yeah. yeah. Mom voice. I had the um, mom voice. Let's see. What else do we have? Ooh, this one was a good one because y'all are older characters. Is mm-hmm. this your f- first coterie? Is your character's first coterie, Mm-mm. rather? No, definitely not. Not it's, for me. It's not in my story. I would not be surprised um, mm-hmm. to put more thought to it. Um, that it could be something that she's seen as <clears throat> if power isn't easy to get in a given area, mm-hmm. like in a given city or town or whatever it happens to be, mm-hmm. um, that a coterie is something that might at least give her some footholds otherwise. Um, But I think she's had enough of an easy time feeding off the power of people. Um, A lot of her backstory has instances of being in, like, Egypt in World War I, or Mm -hmm. in being, yeah, in China just before... That's choice. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, In being in China um, just before... um, the rise of communism or in you know, just all yeah. these places where there's definitely power in certain places, but she does not stay there when things really hit. Yeah. She, she, she kind of likes to sort of stay hidden a little bit and pull strings for lack of a better word. I know. <laughs> she does. I know she hates knots, but she still pulls strings. It's all to get the knots undone. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> Actually, that's a really excellent metaphor. And that is what you should put into your life. From now on, you know, you pull the strings to, to get out the knots. knots. Like that is like your personal, like that's oh my me. god, that's brilliant. I love it. Oh, I love just it. To get out the knots. And as far as me, as far as coteries, um, yeah, I would have had one in the French Revolution for sure, mm-hmm. uh, Haitian Revolution, the American Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that hasn't come out yet, I don't know if it will. I don't know if we're supposed to like go into straight backstory, but there's a You're little. You're welcome to it. It's, yeah, if you want to go into backstory, you can. Yeah, uh, otherwise you can let it. Can I trickle out? out of the table. Well, I think this would this this is something that I don't know that would ever come out. Um, so during the uh, American Revolution, um, they were able to get their hands on uh, artillery from a Rodriga Hortales, I think, is the fake name of this company that was supplying mm-hmm. the rebellion, the American rebellion, mm-hmm. with with artillery and mm-hmm. weapons and stuff. And in, in my backstory, that is a real person mm. okay. that was actually her sire. Mm-hmm. And he, uh-huh. he, it, he's from France and he, he, he found her, he groomed her for 15 years because, uh-huh. you know, she was young, she was, a, she worked, she was a dancer, she was, you know, a peasant and, but was rising up against everything and he just groomed her for 15 years then turned her at her discretion. She said it's what she wanted to do. She was young and hungry, as she essentially was young, young yes. and hu- young. She was very much <laughs> Hamilton, yes. And um, she um, he, he turned her and brought her with him as he mm. was delivering the arms to the American Revolution, and the rest is history. Kind of from there, she kind of... Um, so, Rodriga and her and, and other people who were probably transporting from France mm. would, have, would have been a part of that coterie, and then she would have come back to France for the 
French Revolution because it happened, Mm -hmm. I think, just post the American Revolution. Yes. Yes. So I got my timeline right. Yes, you did. Then the Haitian Revolution happened Mm -hmm. just after that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, she would have gone back to America for quite some time. So that she would have been in the Civil War, too. So I would see her as having a coterie for each of these rebellions because she needs to be the leader of a group of people who can make a difference. And, like... Whether the coterie was working for that particular purpose or not, it would be the purpose that she would instill in it in various ways. Like, okay. right now, what we're doing, we're not really doing anything that has to do with, you know, revolting against the current establishment no. of the United States. But that's, like, her ultimate goal. Yeah. So, like, taking out Talbot, that's totally taking out the establishment. Mm. You know, like, if she could get her hands on Trump, mm. it would be a massacre of the ages you know i think i'm i'm living out a lot please, of people. please don't come get us so. no no i'm i it, this is all and this is all in there's character. so many covid19 patients here don't yes you? yes no you don't want to be here um but i mean as as a character i feel like she she is that's she would do whatever she has to do she would move the needle yeah. of the people she's with however she needs to 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 help the people yeah you know the bottom yeah. line is help the people whatever i gotta do to help the people if i gotta do all this other crap in between it yeah i'll do it but it's got to be... Yeah, if it gets you where you need to be to do what you want to do, kind mm-hmm. of. Similarly to you, I feel like, and and that I'm, I'm doing it as a, as a self... You know, I, it's kind of self-help, but not really, because I'm I, helping other people. Right, I feel like... So, she, Mel is very road to hell, paved by great intentions. Yeah, totally. Um, meanwhile, I think um, Thomasina is, like, intentionally just, you know, like... Hell might be there, whatever. I'm getting for me here. And so it's just like, it's... But the way that she plays it is a very long game. It's yeah. not... The, it's not a con that takes a couple of weeks, takes advantage of a few people, and has minimal rewards. She right. wants a lot. But that means that the investment that she has to give... Oh, yeah. Yeah, is, is that much more. Right. So taking care of people and befriending them, getting their trust, and like, really following through with her word on a number of things is yeah. imperative. There was definitely a moment during season one where, where you got icy and you were just like, I'm getting power for for power's sake. Yeah, that particular I, exchange. Which one? <laughs> the one where we were sitting was, at, the, at, the, at the Queen of Queens. There was a lot of really subtle oh, ones, yeah. but yes. there was one where you got real overt with it, and I think it was you talking to your primogen, maybe? Oh, yeah. Where you just went, it. where you kind of had this moment where you're like, look, I'm getting power, I don't give a fuck who's in No, way. I think that was our exchange. Because I was yeah. like, was I said to you, you cannot talk to Primogen that way. Yeah. And your response to me was, you know, I, I didn't get as far as I did by, by treating people with power like they were meant to keep it. Very much. That is That to me was like, oh, like light bulb went off yeah. and I'm like, oh shit, she's ready to start some shit. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. She's very, un- like, she's entirely uncomfortable with being controlled. Yeah. And so whenever it's... An aspect you got of authority just social, problem. She does. Even if it's just social control from the looks of it. Oh, absolutely. Well, and it's it's very much a a conscious does, you know, following through mm-hmm. with whatever I'm being told to do serve me or not. Mm-hmm. Right. If it doesn't, then it's everything she can do to get out of it. Yeah. If it does, um, like right now with Talbot, it's just like, you're technically a primogen right now. I'm just like, oh no. Do I have to be like? Yeah. It's just and like <laughs> you're making a joke about uh, Thomasina eating Talbot before the show. Yes. Um, um, yeah. No, is, is that her goal? Like, does she? Not necessarily. She's fair. She's pretty flexible. And it's. Um, it gets to a point of. I believe popcorn was mentioned. Oh, God. So, <laughs> we were talking about what's your favorite food? Is like, and, well, you know, for me, it would have to be in the mouth of another vampire. Um, so. So that vampire would then have to have the other thing where they can take the food and it'd be a whole thing. Or just... It would be like a turducken. It's yeah. just gross. <laughs> um, so eat the vampire that ate the man, that ate the chicken, that ate the... Yeah. Um, that just, you know you were saying farm to table. I was. Oh, God. I was. Why? Well, and, but that's... With Talbot, Talbot... Oh my God. Evan's performance was oh, just... Oh, man. Yeah, Evan yeah, did I a love great him. job as Talbot. <gasps> It was so, I I couldn't figure out what that was. And that alone, it like, I did a thing where I said that I was going to be sitting down in front of Talbot. And Mm -hmm. so it was like, is this going to bother him? That I'm sitting down in front of him. Like, is this... You some... were, like, testing to see where yeah. the boundaries were. And it just got completely washed over. There was other stuff going on that he clearly cared about. And it, but he, it didn't... 
come off as something that bothered him that much. So I was like, okay, his priorities are different. Yeah. And I don't completely get them yet. So she's very much a, at this point, watch and see whether or not what's going on with him is going to serve her. Yeah. Um, but as, you know, we've discussed more, you know, you know are, are we looking at Talbot being involved with Olivia's disappearance? Are we yeah. looking at, you know, does we it serve us? We woo. We woo. We woo. We woo. Oh my god. Oh my god. The texts, if they, like, if we get to the point where, like, I want to see these texts. I like, know. I know really that, do. I know Ellie put one of them in the Discord, and I can show mm-hmm. y'all after the show. I am not on Discord. But I, they're amazing. Yes, I need yeah. to see these things. I gotta oh see them. Oh my god. Um, and then, let's see. We woo. Oh my God. One thing I did want to ask, so it's a really gender balanced cast. We have three women yeah. and three men, and even in, you know, between Scott and Abby, we've got four women and four men. Yeah. Like, do you think that I had a full blown question for this and I That's forgot right. all of it? Um, what are your characters' thoughts and maybe y'all's thoughts as well on Cyrus and Anton and Aaron? Like, how do you uh, guys oh, feel? I'm, st- I'm starting on this one. Go for it. So, <laughs> oh, I actually, oh. actually, the first thing I want to do, say too is I think that at some point in this cast, I don't know how much longer we have, but we need to talk about our romantic situations, like in general, because I feel like it would be a, a, a ripe Are topic. Are Thomasina and Melisande dating? We're changing to a morning talk show. <laughs> no, no. Who's but, the hottest new vampire couple in the Atlantic Coterie? Well, I'm just more curious <laughs> because I don't really know about your romantic history, but right. mine has kind of as my character has kind of evolved, has evolved too. But as far as the people who are in our coterie that we care about, um, my experience with Anton has been that he is very, um, he's very astute Mm -hmm. and he is very scholarly. And those are things that uh, Melisanda appreciates as far as they will assist the overall society, right? Mm -hmm. So like she feels as though he has these tendencies to do things that are going to help people, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Aaron, of course, works in a field where he is directly helping human beings. He's, he's such a good boy. He's, he's such a good, good boy. boy. And I feel like <laughs> Mel kind of, and, and I personally really, really appreciate Tyler a lot. Like, he yeah. gives me this really great energy when we're working. He's just a good person. Yeah. He's I also, such a good person. I'm also in Blood Curse Stories with him. I also play in a Monday Yay. D&D game with him. And he's just a nice person. Person. He really is. And that definitely carries over into Aaron. Yes. I think, if I remember correctly, he was saying last week that he had meant for Aaron to be a little less nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. hard when we're, when we're ourselves. <laughs> yeah. He is very much a waterbender and I'm very much a firebender as mm-hmm. characters too. Yeah. So, and being that he's so much younger than I am, like, I feel like the dynamic with them has been much more mother, son, mm-hmm. like, way, way older sister, like, you know, yeah. way older aunt sort mm-hmm. of a feel with yeah. that. Although I really do, like, appreciate him as a person. I feel like he's a peer. But Anton is much more a peer. <coughs> Even though age-wise we're not, I yeah. recognize in him. Game uh, recognizes game. Ever? Yeah, exactly. Game <laughs> recognizes game. Yes, 100%. Like, real recognizes real. So he, yeah. he, he has made himself apparent to me in various other times other than in this coterie. Mm-hmm. Where I've seen him do what he does, and I just, I, I very much respect him. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, that those lines can be crossed. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we had the moment with Aaron where I found out that he had a gun, and I'm like, WTF, mate, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and like, and then with Anton, you know, I did have to kind of, <laughs> not that I, not that I should have, because I feel like we're peers. Yeah. Scolding him, to me, felt the most out of character. Like, not out yeah. of character, but scolding him felt the most, as Mel, I'm like, God, I hate to do this, but you need to know that you messed up, you know? Like, yeah. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, yeah. you know? It was much more the energy I had with him. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I feel like that's kind of how Mel feels about the two of them, you yeah. know? And then about Cyrus as well. Oh, Cyrus. Oh, no, she's going to kill him. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm for real. Like, I don't, I, like, if you don't know, she doesn't have a ton of physical ability. She has one really good one that I just picked up that I'm yeah. excited about. Mm-hmm. But uh, Cyrus is, uh, he is... He is doing things that are going to hurt her coterie. He's doing things that could potentially hurt the culture and the society. He mm-hmm. is so outside of 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 keeping in line with what Mel's tenants are that she. I mean, he's the one who killed, mm-hmm. you know, this person who was innocent. Yeah. yeah. Really. Or he's the one who mini- who instigated that whole thing. Yeah. Well, so, he straight up ate her. Like, I mean. Yeah. I don't know if anybody <laughs> saw the picture that we took at um at a. 
at a help me out 24 hour diner the plaza the place yeah, uh, the majestic, majestic, majestic. oh my god i'm so sorry at the majestic oh but yeah. we were just kind of like looking at each other because honestly like sitting next to him as mel would have been absolutely absurdly painful yeah. like i could not have handled it like seeing him was really hard but yeah. what about you? How does, and how does... Dustin's such a nice person. Oh, I yeah. love Dustin. I've yeah. known Dustin for years and years and years. Like, I love him. Yeah. But... Um, with, um, so obviously, Thomasina and Anton had their, like, confusing <laughs> series of dates where neither of them were aware that they were vampires some freaking how. You were looking for a snick snack and you just missed it somehow. Honestly, no. So Thomasina was looking for, like, okay, so he's a professor mm-hmm. over at Emory. He's got some renown, you know. He's constantly doing night classes. Like, okay, if I if I've got some some kids here who are looking to you know potentially be like good additions mm. to the family, so to speak, and just like this is a good little funnel for that to work into. Yeah. So I really thought that like oh yeah this is this is you know yeah. ghoul material. Hook, um, hook me up with them degrees. Yes, <laughs> yes. I want all of this like immediate back and forth between just like obviously i'm putting kids into the right schools yeah um and so but the funny thing is like as um zach and i were talking about um Mm -hmm. how we're uh working with the characters he's just like thomasina has feelings i was like don't you dare say she has feelings (laughs) um whereas like (laughs) Uh, Anton's very, very... How dare you accuse me of failing things? Right, yeah. (laughs) Anton, on the other hand, is all about just, like... You know, he's very comfortable with himself. Yeah. And wears very his feelings co- on his sleeve. Very he much really so. does. Yeah. He yeah. really, really does. And other stuff to sometimes. Um, <laughs> Wearing and blood instead of a sleeve. Oh, my God. <laughs> the image that I had during that scene was the Crawling most, like, amazing time. visual I've ever had in any role playing I've ever done. Like, you know? I could see the whole thing as it was happening. And Mel was it. totally comfortable with, like, right. nudity, but, like, yeah. she was also, like, the Bro, like, I don't, I, like, blood. can I just not see you yeah. this way? Like, just you. I just, This you know. is you time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but with, like, Aaron, uh, Aaron surprised the stuff out of me, like, as forthright as that character is. Oh, yeah. Um, it's very much, like, yeah, I can give him guff for being just, like, you know, sweet and naive and all that kind of stuff, but... In the same way you have, like, anyone who comes He's had in, his own secret side mission going on the whole season. He has, mm. but you also, anytime you have someone who, like, comes into a new job, and they mm. ask all the dumb questions, and everyone makes fun of them, yeah. they're asking the questions for things that you need to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is getting that job done. And yeah. that, for, like, for Thomasina especially... He's he does really calculate his moves, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so like build wise, it's been okay. This is someone to watch out for, right? Um, and someone to take care of. And for the love of God, someone meeting someone on a shady corner for blood without just giving them money and instead trying to intimidate them into giving <laughs> yeah. what you want. Y'all are so lucky Mel wasn't there because oh my holy God. shit, like that scene was great though. It was Tom- a great scene. Well, if Thomasina had heard any of that, she would have immediately gone in, ripped the neck off that some bitch, and then gone right back and said, "We never do this again." Yeah. <laughs> but with Cirrus. Um, Cyrus. Sorry, I'm gonna call him Cyrus. Cyrus, you jerk. Cyrus, His name I is know. Cyrus. Um, but he, uh, one, she'll have what he's having. Two, um, it's, you know, I know that with that very direct judge dread kind of approach, mm-hmm. of just like I, there will be justice, nah, and just like okay. As long as I stay out of his way and make sure other people know he ate somebody so that they'll fit, pay attention to that shit instead of my shit, then yeah. we'll be just aces. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with the there's there's an individual, like, dynamic of, like, are you useful to me? Are you a threat to me? Mm. Or right. are you... And there, there hasn't quite developed, except in maybe one or two instances, the same emotional effect... There is a little bit now and yeah. again with that with each of them, um, but yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, and that's yeah. That, that, I think that pretty well covers it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna try and do some real quick fire because we have about a minute quick left. Fire. So let's see. Until break or until um, done? How do you guys? Until we're done. Oh, yeah. wow. it's, been a it's, whole... it's only an hour show. I know you got spoiled by two hours. Goodness. So how do both your characters feel about the use of ghouls? Good, bad, ugly. Use of ghouls. Yeah. I need them. I need them. Yeah, I, I'm a scene queen, so yeah. I mean, 
It is what it is. Yeah. All right. And then... Doo, 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 doo. Um, but any theories for what might happen in season two as quickly as you can yes. say it? So let me tell you right now, I absolutely think that our storyteller is going to do some shit where she tries and send us out to try and get some of this like second inquisition mm-hmm. nonsense going on. I like, I've already said that I think, you know, there's the possibility for her sending like Thomasina and Anton out on a date to try and flush one of them out, <laughs> which at this point it's just like, no, I've given her that idea. So she's at least going to do whatever she wants with that. Steve Accurate. Carell movie date night, totally what it exactly. is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty stoked about some second Inquisition stuff, but I know for a fact we're gonna, we're gonna shake some shit up in Atlanta. So also, yeah. I'm true. excited about that. Like, um, any social media handles that you would want people to follow? I am at Hunt for Your Pride on Instagram. Um, Are there any underscores in that, or is that just one word? Hunt for Your Pride. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Melisande less official. Okay. And it's it's the one that I'm playing as Mel, which is not nearly as much fun as if I got to do it as a person. So I may change that up and do it as a person so that yeah. I can post me preparing because as Mel, I yeah. can't really post pictures with things. Because also yeah. you can you, know? you can post your post your looks before. You yeah, actually, that's yeah. I think I see my my coterie doing that, and I'm like, I'm gonna do that. So <laughs> I might do that. Um, are Maybe Thomasina and Philip bonded? No, they are not. Are we ever going to find out more about Melly's mysteriously dedicated hairdresser? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that, that kind of needs to come out. I definitely know my coterie does not need to know about him. Hmm. And then so. are y'all able to tell me, like, in one word, how did your characters meet? No. <laughs> I don't think we figured it out. I would no, say that it was it probably in the 1800s at some point. Oh, Wouldn't maybe. you think? Well. 1890s, maybe? We'll have to revisit that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, as a reminder to all of our fans, you can join our Discord. The link will be in the chat to have discussion with other fans and with our lovely cast and crew. Um, be sure to follow us on social media, Instagram and Twitter at ATL by Night and Facebook at facebook.com slash ATL by Night. And if you'd like more ATL by Night content, remember to follow us on Twitch so that you can join us for Ellie's Coteries of New York and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines playthroughs. At, 9, at 10 a.m. Eastern on Fridays and Saturdays, and that's respectively. So Coteries of New York is on Fridays, and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is on Saturday. She's playing a Malk. You're going to love it. And then thank you so much for watching Blood Bonding, and look forward to next week with our very own Cirrus <coughs> and the Storyteller. Sounds like a kid's book, Cirrus and the Storyteller. It does, <laughs> really. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>